Dr. Kevin Obiamanu, MD. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Kevin Obiamanu, a practicing neurosurgeon. Most honored to interact with you all once again. Thank you for joining me. The year of our law 2023, United States Medical Licensing Examination, Dr. Kevin Manu's Questions and Answers Mastering Series, USMLE Step 1, 2 CK, and Step 3. Without further ado, let's just get right into it. You know how the USMLE does it, crossover systems. So question of the day is gonna be neurology mixed with ophthalmology. Now, before we begin, let me remind you that a USMLE is pretty difficult. It's a scary drug on the sleigh. What a nightmare, oh my God. But whenever you master it, like any other video game you know out there, it becomes so easy for you to handle. Well, a quick reminder, whenever you are faced with a USMLE question, never ever look at the answer options first, all right? Because your eye is gonna peep something that you are very familiar with and your brain is gonna read towards that particular answer. So as a matter of fact, you are gonna sway yourself into choosing the wrong answer, okay? But I can advise you to read the last sentence. You can read the last sentence first before you start, okay? And whenever you start, the easiest way is to look at the age, of course. You look at the age, you look at the gender, you look at the ethnicity, if there is one, like African-American, is it a Caucasian? Is it Ashkenazi Jew? Whatever it is, is it, a, is it an Asian, okay? So you read that, and then you can flip through the, the chief complaint. The chief complaint is always very important. Why did the patient come to you as a physician for help? Okay, so that is a chief complaint and that, that really does it, okay? So right now, you just gotta think again, all right? Number one, never look at the answer options, okay? Number two, you can read the last sentence first before you get to the top of it. And number three, you look at the age, which is very important. And number four, you check out the ethnicity, all right? Is it a Caucasian? Is it an African-American? Is it Ashkenazi Jew? Is it a nation? Is it somebody from Bolivia, from South America, you know, and so on and so forth. Is it is it an Arab patient? Okay, so that is always very important and it's gonna do the magic for you, all right. Without further ado, y'all come on now. Let's just get right into it, okay? Let's start with the first question. Problem of the day, right? Bingo, but wait, you can pause it if you wanna read through the question and choose your answer before we start, okay? So you can pause the video right now, you at home, I mean you at home, you can pause it right now and you can select your answer before I proceed, all right? Let's go. Right on your screen, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna read through the questions first and then we can discuss, all right? Okay. A 16-year-old boy presents to his primary care physician due to poor night vision. The patient developed mild difficulty visualizing at night about five months ago, and it has slowly deteriorated. Visual field examination shows mid-periphery visual loss. External eye examination reveals normal tear formation. Fundoscopic examination shows bilateral optic disc pallor attenuation of retina vessels and areas of dark discoloration in the retina. Which of the following is the most likely mechanism of the patient's visual impairment? This is what I'm talking about right here. The last sentence you can always read, okay? Which of the following is the most likely mechanism of the patient's visual impairment? So they're talking about mechanism of the patient's visual impairment. So now you can go ahead and look at the answer options, okay? So let's, let's look at it. Option A says that by allelic inactivation of RB1 gene. Option B, genetic progressive retinal dystrophy. Option C, increased intracranial pressure. Option D, poor aqueous outflow due to narrow angle. And option E, finally, retinal artery occlusion, okay? So we're gonna go through it we can mark some things out and see which one is the answer, okay? Look, if you don't know what the answer option is, you can start marking some of the wrong options out, okay? So we can choose some of the wrong options out and then we can know the right option, okay? Look, you can answer this question between five to 10 seconds, all right? No joke. At this point, we're gonna be bonafide ophthalmologists, okay? Let's get our groove on. Okay, bonafide ophthalmologist, okay? Y'all can spend only 10 seconds in answering this question. No joke. I told y'all 
Look at the last sentence. The last sentence you have is which of the following is most likely mechanism of the patient's visual impairment. They're talking about the visual impairment, okay? And now, sometimes you can also look at the sentence before the last. And the sentence before the last, or the last phrase before the last sentence is talking about what? That discoloration of the retina, all right? And it's what? It's a 16-year-old boy. He's so young. How can a young boy have that discoloration of the retina? It should be something genetic. It should be a DNA problem. And you can see option B, it's a genetic progressive disease. Cause once we read the 16 year old boy had a visual problem, which was deteriorating with time. So it's progressive. And they did mention of the retina, the retina, there was retina all over the question. Okay. So that is retina dystrophy. You have retina in choice B. It is choice B. That is the answer. So I can even answer a USMLE question without knowing the diagnosis. Isn't that cool? Come on. <laughs> that is so cool. It's super cool. You see, there are several ways you can get through with it. Okay. But if you know what a diagnosis is, of course, that is super. Okay. So let's, let's get through the diagnosis. What is dark discoloration of the retina? Well, look at some images. Let's look at some images. All right. On your screens now. Okay. So we have bone speckles. These dark discolorations are known as bone speckles or speckles. All right. So this is retinitis pigmentosa. Looking at our patient, he has what? He has a poor night vision, which is deteriorating visual field loss. Phonoscopic changes have what? Pigmented accumulation, optic disc pallor, retinal vessel attenuation. All these are consistent with retinitis pigmentosa. If you know what retinitis pigmentosa is, retinitis pigmentosa is what we're talking about now. And of course, this is a genetic disease in the DNA characterized by progressive dystrophy of the pigmented epithelium, the retinal pigmented epithelium, and also the photoreceptors like the rods and the combs, you know. All right, so I'm gonna show you lots of images of retinitis pigmentosum as you see on your screens now. So in the advanced disease, the loss of the cones, the photoreceptors, the, the rods and the cones, the cones causes a lot of central visual acuity because the rods, can be found in the central retina. So the degeneration of these retina epithelial cells causes the release of pigments, which deposit in the form of bone spickles. Okay, on your screens right now, y'all can see the bone spickles. All right, take notice of it. So if you know it, then you know they're talking about retinitis pigmentosa and the answer is choice B. It's as simple as that. So rest of the answer options are super high yield, which can be another question for another day. Okay, so option A talked about biallelic inactivation of RB1 gene. Okay, so do you remember your tumor suppressor genes? Okay, so we have the RB gene and the P53, all right? So P53 is to leave from any syndrome, okay? Don't forget, P53 is leave from any syndrome. That's the SBLA, that is the sarcoma, the breast, the leukemia, and the adrenal tumor okay and now we have the rb the rb is the eye that's a retinoblastoma we have the nuisance two hit hypothesis okay don't forget that the two hit hypothesis rb suppressor genes that's the retinoblastoma on your screen you can see a kid with retinoblastoma okay that is quite serious with nuisance two hit hypothesis two copies of the genes must be knocked out in order to promote malignancy okay hereditary and sporadic all right Okay, with the sporadic, that means you have two mutated genes, but with the inherited, you have one acquired, one mutated gene, all right? So take notice of RB, retinoblastoma. It's quite scary, ain't it? But yeah, that is option A right there. Option C is pretty easy. That is increased intracranial pressure. Whenever you have increased intracranial pressure, that means we're talking about what? Papilledema. Okay, so that is papilledema. Papilledema is associated with transient visual obscurations and decreased visual acuity, okay? The patients will have symptoms like headaches and vomiting, which is not common in this patient, okay? We couldn't see these symptoms in our patient, in the 16-year-old boy, so that is just not it, okay? So you can even mark that out. 
these are images on your screens now you can see images of papilledema and they have some form of blurry optic disc due to the pressure in the brain okay that is intracranial pressure all right so that is typical of papilledema all right so blurry optic disc which is quite different from the retina you know dark discolorations of the retinitis pigmentosa all right choice d is poor aqueous outflow due to what narrow angle this is glaucoma okay we have the close angle or the narrow glaucoma and we have the open angle glaucoma okay this is among african americans africans people of dark descent okay among my people i have a lot of family members with glaucoma okay it's very common okay among blacks all right so that is just not it okay if they had mentioned an african-american probably you might think of that and there is a lot associated with it okay that is more of optic nerve capping okay on fundoscopy so you check it out it's more of optic nerve capping so that is quite different you know the ciliary bodies block there is narrowing between uh the angle the angle between the iris and the cornea so the aqueous humor cannot flow out and it's causing a backup pressure behind the optic nerve destroys the optic nerve too so it can lead to peripheral blindness and all that stuff you know and optic nerve capping all right as you can see on your image so that is glaucoma that is quite a different issue finally the last option choice e is the crao the central retina artery occlusion this is also very high yield stuff but for today that's not what we're talking about because you're looking for what the whitening of the retina and also you're looking out for the cherry red macula okay so if you don't see the cherry red macula and the whitening of the retina don't choose that option but this is a super high yield option for another day okay that's a crao so you can check it out and um without further ado end of the usmle step one question the usmle step one always goes deep basic sciences into the mechanisms and all that the concepts okay so they want to know the genetic progression of you know what i'm saying okay but the usmle step 2 ck and like that okay you're going to ask what are you likely to do next the initial step the best next step of management etc and they're going to give you the bone speckles they're going to give you all this retinal progression genetic whatever they're going to give you everything and they're going to tell you what are you likely to do next but they're gonna omit the fundoscopic test out so y'all gotta know okay i'm now a bona fide ophthalmologist let me try some fundoscopy okay so that's how it is okay is it an x-ray is it mri is it a ct scan you know so i gotta know okay so the step two ck is pretty easy but the step one always take you deep into the basic sciences and the mechanisms okay so y'all gotta master it Okay, so thank you very much for joining me today. <laughs> All right, I'm glad you've been able to stay up to this point. I hope it was fun. I'm coming back another time, okay? <laughs> so wait for me. I'll be back again. All right. Uh-oh. Sai jian. Arigato. Bye-bye. Ciao. Wow. Hello family, this is Dr. Kevin Obiamrani, MD. Y'all welcome to my channel. Subscribe, like, comment, and share. And God bless. Thank you.